That was a day. <laughs> that was a. That's that what that was. That was a day. Armando challenged you. I've given him two hundred and fifty dollars, so he has a two hundred fifty dollar budget. He has twenty four hours to film a music video and also edit it. Yeah. We're at the part where it's the edit. Eleven fifty nine. You have ten hours to edit this. <laughs> <laughs> After this long day, we're really big on editing on our channel. We want you to walk us through your editing process, but also you shoot a ton of music videos each month. Yeah. There are things along the way that you've picked up that you've learned that made today possible. What I want you to do in this episode of The Method is let them know what's going on. Huh? That being said, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Just me? Uh, no. Nathan! What's up? <laughs> what's, what's up? Can you make sure he stays up and can complete this 24 hour challenge? Yeah, yeah, bro. <laughs> All yeah. right, yeah. Cool, man. All right, man, you ready? Yeah, I guess so. Okay, so we're gonna be editing in Premiere, Premiere Pro. Got everything loaded up, ready to go. But something just doesn't like feel right. It doesn't feel like a brick video. No, I know. No, it's... Dude, it's red. Yeah, that looks... Yeah, now that looks we're red. rocking. Now we're rocking, okay. Now we're oh, rocking. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, Ooh. there we go. <laughs> now the video can yes. begin. Let's go. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna like bang through this. I'm gonna try and get like the cut as is all by itself, like without any effects, without any color grade. And then we'll kind of like reconvene after that and, and you know, go through like some of the things that we did on the shoe and then maybe some of the things that I did in the edit and then explain the things after. Hey, Burke. Huh? Do you like cinnamon? I'm easy. Okay. Burke's easy. This is where I would make some kind of funny remark about YouTubers. I just need my crack. Here you go, man. Oh, dude. Oh, oh. A little splash of cinnamon oh, in there. Oh my gosh, dude. I got eight and a half hours. Jesus, take the wheel. How's your edit coming along, then? I'm trying to look at what the artist is doing with his hands and like just any movements that he does. Like he talks about like Dalai Lama, so he, could, he puts up like his hands like this. Uh, mentions money in one shot, so he did something like this. So I'm just like looking for those visual like references to the lyrics. There was only a few shots that we shot to the lyrics. There's like a part where he talks about an elementary school, so we shot it outside of school. In front of the elementary school where the kids record the action on their phones. And I can do anything you that to take you to the set back. Basketball, so we shot basketball court. The rest of the stuff, we just got a bunch of different performance shots, and now I'm trying to find a way to have it tie to the lyrics in some way, shape, or mm -hmm. form. I had noticed earlier that I saw an Instagram story. You were, you had the camera, and you were kind of shaking it a little bit. Something that I think is really important is thinking about like the vibe for the piece. A great way to kind of portray that vibe is through motion. You know, whether that's on a gimbal or handheld or on a jib, on a drone, whatever. Whatever types of shots that you're getting, like that does convey some sort of mood or emotion. The artist gave us two songs. One was more chill, which probably would have called for a gimbal. Knowing that we were gonna shoot this handheld, we had it, we had to have it be like a more upbeat, you know, uppity song. And that's kind of like what I was doing with the camera and I was vibing with the artist and he was getting like really flowy with his movements and his arms and everything. And like, I personally love like, a handheld vibe, so I'm always gonna gravitate towards like a more high energy, For like sure. intense vibe. And that's something like I'm doing with the edit as well. I'm trying to think about these cuts and like making them quicker and faster. Finding those movements that flow well together if I can, so it looks like it's just one fluid motion. Enemy feel, whatever you spit in is real. To kind of keep that high intensity, uh, I did a couple of lens effects, and one of them was using the prism, and I only ended up using that for, for one of the shots in this video. And the reason that we didn't end up using it as much as I would have liked to was because uh, the lens wasn't fast. It wasn't a super fast aperture. When you throw something in front of a lens that's like a f3.5 or 4, it doesn't give you that depth that you would have if you if you shot on a faster lens. But we ended up using it for some of the shots that we got in the studio with the lights just because I really liked the way that the light was reflecting off the glass of the prism. And then another thing that I ended up doing was uh, lens whacking, which is where you set the focus ring to infinity, you take the lens off and then you wiggle it around in front of your sensor and it gives these weird focusing effects. Some Sometimes it gives a flaring effect. I've made a video on that. There's tons of other videos out there. If you've never heard of lens whacking, definitely take a look at it. Loosen like the, the second from the top and then just like spin it back and forth. 
Now, one thing I want to touch on with the studio and the lighting is that we did end up renting two of the lights, but we really only ended up using the Ari. We took the gel and we put it on the Ari and then Jonathan just kind of swung it back and forth. Another lighting setup we went with was, was just like a, a harsh backlight. Another shot that we went with, and actually Armando came up with this shot idea, was the shadow on the wall. And I ended up really liking this one and I think I used a lot of these shots in this video. We did actually end up using the, the little light panel as a, as a key light to, to light our talents. I think the important thing is that we tried a bunch of different things. We tried a bunch of different lighting techniques, a bunch of different lighting setups so that we could get different looks so that we had enough footage to splice together in this edit. Before I start color grading the footage, one thing I wanted to mention is that I actually created like a custom picture profile on the T3i. This camera does not have a lot of stops of dynamic range, so creating a, a flat profile kind of emulates log to an extent. Basically what I did was I just turned the sharpness all the way down, the contrast, the saturation, just I turned everything all the way down in the camera. I didn't mess with the color tone though. I wanted to leave that as is. I want those nice Canon colors, you know, but everything else like contrast, saturation, and sharpness, like I brought that all the way down to get as flat as a profile as possible. That way in post, like I can add any of that stuff later if I need to, but I wanted to retain as much dynamic range as possible. I mean, it's 2.22 right now. I would like to try and get some sleep tonight. <laughs> Dude, holy crap, holy crap. What time is it? 4.01, 4.01 in the morning, folks. I'm gonna call this video done. I'm gonna call it completed. I've spent some time to, to do some effects. I've spent some time on the cut, color grade, all that stuff. We're gonna get some sleep and then we'll talk about all the effects and everything in the morning. So, see you guys in a few hours. Couple hours of sleep, freshened up, ready to go. I'm gonna break down some of the effects that I did in this video. The thing that you're gonna see the most are those film burn effects and the film burn pack that I used is actually one that I created myself. Uh, I made a video on that. And then you're just like moving the light around and the lens around and exposing more light into the sensor and taking it away to get that weird film burn effect. What I basically would do is would, I would take these clips here and I would just drag them on my, onto my timeline. I'm not actually gonna do that because I would ruin the timeline. And then I would come in here and then just adjust the blending mode to like vivid light. I usually do vivid light, pin light, uh, exclusion's really cool, difference is really cool, color dodge is really cool. Is that just a matter of just trial and error, just testing out? And trial and error, seeing, seeing what works. And not every single blending mode is gonna do the same thing to every single clip because your lighting is going to be different per clip. And then the only other effect effect that I used was like just shifting with the hue. That would be this right here, that effect. So how would you do that? All I did right there was I put an adjustment layer on the timeline, uh -huh. I used color balance, and then I keyframed the hue. So what I would do is, let's just say for example, we create a new adjustment layer real quick. You come over to your effects control panel and then type in color balance, and then go to color balance HLS, set a keyframe for your hue, and then move over and then I usually change it to like 5X and then feel it out. So and that means that it's gonna rotate through your hue five times. What about your actual process of color grading? So I go to my color tab. I use adjustment layers and the reason I use adjustment layers is because I can drag the adjustment layer over the entire sequence and then make those fine adjustments after. Rather than having to copy paste, copy paste, copy paste and then go into each individual clip and adjust from there. The first thing I always go to is my curves. So I'm just gonna like, let's just. Can you explain like I'm five, how the curves work? Basically curves are messing with your shadows and your highlights and your midtones. Yeah, it's because you're working with white, right? Red so, and red, yellow, Yeah, then red, you can mess, blue. then you can go with like the RGB and everything okay. and mess with that way and that messes with the color tone. In this area, this is roughly where your shadows are gonna live. All right. In this area, that's roughly where your midtones are gonna live and then in this area is where highlights are gonna live. Got it. So if you take your shadows and you drag them down, it's gonna bring them down. If you bring them up, it's gonna it's gonna bring them up. Usually what you would do is you would create an S-curve and all this is doing is basically adding contrast to the image. You're okay. making the whites whiter and the blacks blacker. Got it. The color grade of this, since it's not a super high dynamic range, I had to try and bring some information back. So with my curves, I just brought the black sound because I wanted it to be darker, I wanted it to be mm -hmm. more moody. I also lifted it a little bit. When you do this, when you lift it uh, at the edge, it gives that like filmy effect yeah, to like it. Yeah, that faded film. Yeah. After I brought the shadows on, I needed to bring the highlights down as well. Yeah. After I did my curves, I came into my basic correction. You know, if I had to adjust my exposure, my contrast, highlight shadows, 
whites, blacks. So far, that's just the color correction, right? We haven't even gotten to the grading yet. Yeah, yeah, technically this is just uh, the color correction part. Okay. It is a little stylized, so you some people may consider it the grade. This top layer is our color grade. Now, for our color grade, I actually just used one of my LUTs that I created. So I, this is a personal LUT, I've never released them. I've thought about releasing them, so maybe I will. I brought the intensity of that LUT down. I also took the vibrance down just because the image off the T3i was a little too vibrant. And then I also believe that I did bring, yep, I brought the image down a little more to the cooler side, minus 10. And then from there, all I did was I would just mess, like my color grade, you can see here, that's just across the whole video. Now, the color correction, the bottom adjustment layer, that changes per clip yeah. because your exposure is gonna be different, your highlights are gonna be different, all that stuff. So right. I had to adjust that and then do the creative look after. Just keep in mind, Burke is putting out videos weekly, multiple times a week. This is something that he does all the time. So of course, someone that is constantly doing this is gonna be able to put something out that is this, the, the level that it, what's up bro? Hey! Jonathan, just in time for the outro. Yeah. That being said, guys, make sure to check out Burke and Armando and subscribe to Metabox. All right, see you next week. Stay hungry. Deuces. Where did Burke go? Is that a thing? He just disappeared? Burke? Whoa, what's up? Oh, uh, yeah, I found, a, I found this copy in the fridge. I figured I was just gonna... Okay. Yeah, nothing, man. nothing happened here.